All right, welcome to the conversation on the Young Turks Network. Uh, joining us now is uh, senior investigative reporter Tiwa Chang. Uh, he is uh, tasked with finding out the money and politics behind climate change uh, stories. He's done a great job of that again. Uh, and this time, Tiwa, you wrote about oil companies trying to get subsidies from America while pushing out workers. So uh, interesting details in there. Uh, first of all, why on God's green earth are oil companies trying to get subsidies in the middle of coronavirus? What, is the, what do they have to do with coronavirus? Because of the coronavirus, the pandemic, you know, there's not a lot of use of uh, petroleum products because people aren't driving. There's not as much industry going on. So they, what's happening is that uh, they have, there's a glut because of Russia and Saudi Arabia trying to hurt the American shale oil industry. They increase their production. And so you have, you know, classic oversupply and under demand. I mean, but dramatically under demand because basically, you know, no one's driving, et cetera. So the gasoline and there's so much oil out there that we have Saudi Arabian tankers actually in the ocean with nowhere to dock in the U.S. And then you have the Trump administration offered 30 million barrels in storage space at the strategic petroleum reserve tanks along the Gulf of Mexico, mainly uh, near in Louisiana. So you've got all this extra oil. So they're saying, oh, we're, we're losing business. It's going to hurt our workers. We're going to have to lay them off. And while they're saying that, and in particular it was Harold Hamm when he met with the President uh, Trump on April 3rd at the White House with six other oil executives, they're basically, we looked it up and we found that they were, they're looking for automation engineers. And the automation engineers specifically say they want to automate and make it more efficient. And they say it's been a policy in this industry. The shale oil industry actually has a convention every year in September in Houston called automation, where they talk about being more efficient. And in one case, the smog, that, that website, they went to a convention and one of the speakers from a natural gas company actually said, someday we're gonna have these rigs with nobody on them. We'll have no staff at all. It's strictly gonna be computer, using computers, software, and operating them without uh, people there at all. And I talked to some business people the other day, and they said, you know, in business, if you can cut costs, you're going to do it. And also, if you can be the first to do that, then you're going to have a head start on everybody else. So the first company that does that is going to be the one that gets ahead of the game in the oil industry. And Continental Resources, Inc., which is the Oklahoma-based company founded by Harold Hamm, they have a reputation of using technology, and they have a couple of people now that are already on staff using the SCADA combination software, hardware, uh, computer system to control uh, the oil rigs. And now they're also looking to hire people. We, I, I actually saved the website in case they try to erase it and stuff where they're trying to hire another engineer. And, you know, listen, if, if a company is trying to hire engineers for automation and automation is to reduce the number of people, you're trying to get rid of people who are working for you. You're not really concerned about uh, the people who work for you. You're concerried about maximizing profits. So, T.Y., there's, uh, in my opinion, three components to this story. Uh, tr the subsidies, the getting rid of their workers, and then Harold Hamm, who's a giant contributor to the Republicans, and specifically to Donald Trump. I want to give that number in a little bit. But let, let's finish up the subsidies first. Uh, you laid out the whole story so people have the context. So now to dive a little bit more deeply into it. Normally, the, the idea behind subsidies in an emergency like this is, well, Americans need this service. So, so let's say that it's a, something that has to do with our security. They might say, well, look, we need to make tanks in the future. And so you got to protect the tank making company. Or uh, more realistically, hey, we need airplanes. So we got to protect their airlines and we got the employees that work there, et cetera. Well, in this case, they've got two problems in making that argument, right? One is, well, you guys have made trillions of dollars in profits throughout uh, the history of the oil industry. Isn't this capitalism, baby? Well, and we don't, and the problem here is that we have apparently too much oil. So it's not like when the pandemic's uh, done, well, you know what? We'll never be able to find oil again, <laughs> right? <laughs> so doesn't that kind of defeat any rationale for giving them a dollar in U.S. taxpayer subsidies? Really, if you're really concerned about the workers, what you should be doing 
is training these workers to build sustainable energy sources because the workers who build these or work on these rigs can also uh, build rigs that drill for geothermal uh, energy, which is uh, renewable because of the, mag the magnetic flow for moves the magnet around inside the earth. So some of the same workers who operate forklifts, who, who uh, operate the uh, heavy machinery and put together the rigs, they could easily be transferred over to building eco parts that have solar, wind, and geothermal. And then they would actually have good, you know, union jobs, high paying that could last five to 10 years, according to some of the environmentalists we talked to. So if you're really concerned about these workers, you would be making sure that the money would be going to uh, renewable uh, resources. In fact, I just read this today is that out of the half a million workers who work on renewable energy sources like solar and wind, 100,000 of them have already been laid off. And that's more than the oil workers. But nobody's saying anything about helping them. And that's really where the future belongs. I mean, at this point, a good uh, statistic that came out, a hopeful statistic, was that for the first quarter of this year in the United States, for the first time ever in its history, the electricity used in the United States from uh, renewable sources like solar and wind was more than the energy generated by coal. The renewable source had 17.2% and the, the energy generated by coal was 17.1%. Just 12 years ago, that was 50% coal sourced. The electricity in the country came from 50% was from coal generated plants. It's now down to 17.1%. That should continue. That's clearly the way we need to go. And as one environmentalist said to me, listen, if we get it from the sun and the wind, and geothermal, nobody can take that away from us. It's not like Saudi Arabia or Russia can say, we don't want to give it to you anymore. It's there and it's free. So we make a big investment there, a lot less, by the way, than the 2.2 trillion that's going out now. And then we've got that resource on a permanent basis, practically. So Tiwa, they, they usually put out the fiction that, oh my God, it's not that we're looking out for coal industry executives or oil industry executives, we're looking out for the jobs. And and that uh, is put to a lie often because, for example, in coal, they then do mountaintop removal, which actually requires very, very few workers. And yet the legislators still protect that portion of the industry, even though it destroys the landscape and the culture around Appalachia, for example, and they do it because they get donations, of course, <laughs> from those uh, executives. And in the oil companies, you just proved in this story, and everybody can check it out at tyt.com slash investigates, that they're looking to automate and get rid of jobs. So it ain't about the jobs. But I, the, the question I wanted to ask you in that regard is, as they're telling folks in the political landscape, oh, I should believe me, all I care about is the jobs. When they go talk to investors, isn't that when they're the most honest and tell them, hey, look at all the money we're going to save by cutting all these jobs. Yes, I, I think that's correct. And with the euphemism that uh, Jonathan Larson found in, in an annual report was that they said technical efficiency, technological efficiency. And that's basically a euphemism for automation. And that you won't see automation in the annual report from Continental Resources for the last three years. There's not one mention of automation, but you find Technical, technological efficiency all over the place, and then, and then when I looked up and searched for jobs, I found the you know that the company was actually looking for automation engineers. So speaking of which, let's talk about Harold Ham, who runs this company that uh, that is trying to get the subsidies and has already talked to Donald Trump, as you explained earlier. So how much money has he given Donald Trump so far? But he's contributed and through his packs and everything about a half a million dollars. In our system, that's not called a bribe. <laughs> yeah, right. It's not a I give five hundred thousand dollars. Then I ask for billions in return in subsidies from American taxpayers. But no, no, nothing to see here. Not at all, bribe. Uh, but but see, yeah. that's the big problem, isn't it? That you have with Citizens United that they can put all that money into political action committees, and it's basically you're a jury. You're going to decide someone's fate, and you only hear one side because one side can afford to buy all the advertising, and the other side can't. And that's basically what it's come down to in a lot of races, that if you don't have the money for the TV ads and the campaign and the brochures and the staff, then you can't get your message out there. And it's basically you're going to trial 
and you're only hearing one side, you're only hearing the defense, or you're only hearing the prosecution, and that's just not going to, so money is controlling it, and who has the most money? The Republican Party has the most money. They have the wealthiest people. So, uh, T.Y. Chang, fine. fighting through all that. Thank you, brother. The TYT Plus app is now available on iOS and Android. Download to get more TYT content at tyt.com slash app.